Hello everyone, welcome to JK Dentis. Today I chose a conceptual topic to teach. The reason to choose this topic was I myself used to find it strenuous during my UG days. So what that topic is? Biomechanics of RPD. Many students used to skip this topic because this topic requires little bit of physics to understand this topic. So what do you mean by biomechanics? Biomechanics deals with the movement and the structures and it is mainly designing structures which are in a balanced condition. We will see about the importance of biomechanics. We are designing an assembly or we can say a design. We need to design something which will be in a balanced state and secondarily will not create undue stress and remove unwanted stress from the areas. That is the main aim of the biomechanics. The biomechanics deals with the principle of the machines. There are different kind of machines like lever, wheel, axle, screw, wedge and many more. The machines were devised to reduce the effort. So, we are going to learn first about lever principle. The concept of lever principle is mainly to reduce the effort and gain a mechanical advantage. So, let's see about the different lever mechanisms. Those are basically of three types. First order lever, second order lever and the third order lever. The levers are basically concentrated on the three terms that is fulcrum, load and the effort. We will see what is fulcrum, load and effort by an example. So in this example you can see this is a fulcrum. Fulcrum is the center of these two points. On these two points there is on one side there is load and to the other side there is effort. The fulcrum is a point around which something rotates or something is being supported. If on both the sides there are equal weights, they will move up and down balancing each other on a fulcrum. So that is a seesaw mechanism for first order lever. But what will happen if weight to one side get increased? Now you can see in this there is elephant sitting on one side and there is a mouse. So you can see the weight to one side have increased. Now in the next slide I will show you how to counteract this effect by lever 1 principle. In this there is fulcrum. To one side there is effort and to the other side there is a load. The effort is the mouse and the load is the elephant. The mouse want to lift this elephant. Okay. So how he can? He decided to bring the elephant closer to the fulcrum. Now we will talk in terms of physics. This is the fulcrum. This is the load arm. This is the effort arm. You want to lift this arm up. Okay. So what you need? You need your load closer to the fulcrum for easy lifting of the load. How we can do so? Now, we will see with another example. There is a formula in the physics says moment is in equals to force into distance. For example, this is our fulcrum. What we need? We have increased the distance of the effort to the fulcrum and reduced the distance from the fulcrum to the load. But the actual outcome is the same. So in short, to gain mechanical advantage of lifting this part, we need to increase the distance of the effort arm to the fulcrum. So this part will be easily lifted. Now we can see in the next slide another example. Like this is the load, this is the effort arm. You can see the distance from the fulcrum to the load is less and distance from the fulcrum to the effort is more. So this is lifted very easily. The second example is a paint container. 
the lid is the load the point at which the screw driver is being placed is the fulcrum and the handle we are holding is the effort so we are putting the effort to lift that lid so in that way the we get the mechanical advantage of less effort on which first order lever is being placed now i will help you to correlate this example with cast partial denture assembly in cases of distal extension partial denture distal extension partial denture means the denture or the assembly supported at only one end it means it has tooth on only one end and to this side there is our removable assembly supported by the clasp as well as the rest so in this diagram you can see there is a rest to the distal side there is a retentive arm and this is the removable partial denture assembly here i will divide the terms fulcrum is the area of the rest your effort will be the occlusal force why occlusal force because we are applying it we are putting it that's why it is considered as the effort fulcrum is the point around which the assembly can rotate that's why the rest is considered as the fulcrum and the retentive arm or we can say the clasp is our resistance or we can say the load this retentive arm engages the tip the tip of the arm engages the undercut of the tooth so basically whatever the load is there is actually being pressurizing the tooth now we will connect it with the lever one. as i have already told same diagram i draw like this this is the fulcrum this is our effort arm and this is our load arm you can see the distance between the load arm and the fulcrum is less and fulcrum to the effort is more if occlusal force is applied this part will get lifted very easily this that's why we are engaging the retentive tip in the undercut of the tooth so we can protect this movement by engaging the tip secondly i have told you in the previous example if the distance is being increased small effort can help to lift large load so it means here the effort though it is less load in this side will be more so this tooth will be under constant pressure and ultimately this assembly will cause the tooth to loosen or weaken that we don't want in a cast partial denture so lever one is not at all beneficial for the cast partial denture of a distal extension secondly what we can do we can convert this assembly to second order lever or we can place an indirect retainer so what we are doing by placing an indirect retainer the retainer that is indirect retainer is placed away from the fulcrum so what we are doing we are increasing the distance of the fulcrum and the retainer so again what happened the distance of the effort and the fulcrum and fulcrum and the indirect retainer becomes equal again the seesaw mechanism now they are balancing each other and so our assembly will not pressurize this tooth as well as will be in a balanced condition or will not get dislodged from its area this was all about correlation of lever one now in the second example you can see there is a retentive tip i have told it is engaging the undercut but it is placed cervically you can see that why it is placed cervically we'll see with an example imagine this is a pole and it is under a ground if you try to pull oh sorry if you try to push that pole from this side it is easy but if you try to push from this side it is very difficult because fulcrum is closer to the ground so in that case we are placing the retentive arm closer to the bone so it will be difficult for disengagement of the clasp that is the second principle why the retentive tip is being placed in the undercut now we will see about the second order lever in the second order lever you can imagine about the pulley okay to one side the effort 
the i am holding the pulley that is the effort side and with the opposite side there is a fulcrum and the load is in between so this is the effort this is the load and this is the fulcrum now when we apply the effort like i want to lift that pulley i will hold this okay what will happen this load will be directed towards the area of the fulcrum and it becomes easy to hold that so in this way when i'm holding it the load becomes easier to get hold it now i will show you another example of lever 2 you can imagine about a pulley like i am carrying a pulley so the load is in the middle i am holding it upstairs and there is a fulcrum so it is very easy to carry it now we can correlate it with the example this is a maxillary example there is i bar mesial breast and our removable denture now here the effort is our gravity secondly this is the i bar is our load and this mesial breast is considered as a fulcrum you can correlate it with i have already given previous example of a pulley the middle portion that is the load front is the fulcrum the wheel and the effort which i am holding the pulley what will happen if this assembly moves downward this load will try to engage the undercut in the cervical area like this so it tries to go down this will also try to go down towards the fulcrum so when it's going down the fulcrum will counteract the effect and transfer the load along the long axis of the tube that is it will help the assembly to seat back again and secondly our i bar will engage the undercut and prevent the dislodgement the second important point there will be less load i have already told with this we get a better mechanical advantage because we can easily carry the load that means the load is become less heavier that's why it will not traumatize our tooth hence in many distal extension cases we go for an i bar assembly than the retentive arm the previous one i have told you so we have converted the assembly like in second order for the better design principles same the example can be correlated with the cast partial denture now i will tell you about the third order lever the third order lever there is load to one side and fulcrum to the opposite but the effort is in the middle imagine i'm holding something in on my in my hands for lifting my elbow will act as a fulcrum this arm will be the effort arm and the thing i am holding is the load here you can see that or you can take an example of a tweezer when i am trying to hold the load i need to apply pressure in the middle area the assembly or we can say the third order lever do not have any mechanical advantage because here the effort required is more while in the earlier concept there we are what we were doing we are reducing the effort but here what happens the effort is more now i can correlate this with our dentures okay in this there is a tooth supported denture this is our removable denture breast and the retentive arm what happens if sticky food comes in contact with our denture this sticky food tries to pull our denture up but i have already told you in class 3 effort is required more so more effort will be required to dislodge this along with that this fulcrum and retentive arm will counteract the effort from getting pulled and will bring back the assembly to the area where it is located and will prevent its dislodgement this retentive arm as well as the fulcrum you can see i have correlated this with an example of lifting the weight so in this way i have explained you about lever 
टू एंड थ्री और वी कैन सी से फर्स्ट ऑर्डर लीवर सेकेंड ऑर्डर लीवर एंड दी थर्ड ऑर्डर लीवर एंड आई हैव को रिलेटेड विथ अ कास्ट पार्शियल डेंचर सो इन शॉर्ट आई वुड लाइक टू से we need an assembly which is a balanced one secondly which will not disturb our tooth which will not traumatize our tooth because we are taking the tooth as an abutment for the purpose of support not to damage them like our assembly should not do harm to our natural structures as divan says do no harm that is our purpose so i hope you understood about this levers and i have correlated it with your cast partial denture this topic will help you clinically to design a cast partial denture in better ways and for understanding the concept of liver mechanism also thank you so much